Loss of a friend. Vivify Studio Stories. The flashback of that incident still haunts me to this day. That one horrible incident left an unhealable scar on my mind. As I recall that incident my body shivered and becomes feeble. It was raining heavily that day when I was informed of the mishap. As I peacefully sat enjoying every sip of my hot chocolate, the phone started ringing. I placed the piping hot chocolate cup on the wooden side table that laid next to my reclining armchair. I hastily walked towards the phone. I picked up the receiver. In a flash of a second my whole world came crashing down on me. For a second it felt as if I had lost all my senses. I could feel my heart racing faster than it normally does. The phone receiver slipped out of my sweaty shivering palm as I struggled to accept the reality slap that came swiping right across my face. The woman on the other end of the line informed me of the brutal murder of my childhood friend. Shivers ran up my spine hearing the news. As I struggled to grasp my breath, the woman on the phone was calling from a nearby police station. She told me that a body of a young female just arrived at the police headquarters and wanted me to urgently come and identify her body. She found my phone number from the deceased person's mobile. I quickly grabbed my bag and rushed out of the room. Tears of regret and sorrow came pouring out of my eyes. As my sedan slowed down in front of the police station. As I stepped into the cabin two police officers came rushing towards me. You must be Kelly, exclaimed one of the officers. Yes, I certainly am, I replied. One of the officer clenched my fist and took me to the autopsy room, where a deceased body wrapped in white muslin cloth laid on the cracked cemented floor. The mortuary was filled with a foul and decayed smell of the decomposed body. I covered my face with my handkerchief. The police constable bent down and removed the white cloth of the dead body. Due to decomposition, the face had been distorted and gotten all pale in color. I yelped in fear and whispered, Yes, I recognize her she is Monica my childhood friend. The officer quickly covered the corpse and showed me the way out of the mortuary. As I sat silently on the chair, the police officer told me that they needed to question me about Monica's last contact that she made with me via mobile. My hands trembled as I hold the water glass. I took few sips and placed the glass back on the table. I could clearly recall the day before Monica's murder. Monica was a pure, charismatic and high-spirited person. Her life was full of ups and downs but she always smiled and never let anyone know what was going inside her. She was one of the most sensible person I ever came across. After our graduation, I was the only friend that she was in close contact with. After our university ended I started doing a job and she started fulfilling her traveling goals, which she always wanted to do. She often shared her traveling and vacation pictures and my WhatsApp was most of the times flooded with her pictures. She did told me that while traveling she met a guy named Adam, to whom she had developed some bonding with. She found Adam to be a splendid human, with who she shared a special chemistry with. She seemed happy whenever we chatted. She shared her special life moments. I as a good friend always wanted to see Monica at her best. It was 27th of August when she texted me and informed me of her returning back to Bradford. I was jubilant and excited upon hearing of her return. She also told me that few days prior to her returning, she and Adam will be making their relationship official. Hearing the news of Monica getting married gave me goosebumps. Whatever we planned together in our childhood, relating to our marriage and the special day, was soon becoming reality. On the day of the 27th of August, the hour hand on the clock struck 3 p.m. Monica's and Adam's return flight was to land at Leeds Bradford Airport within an hour. As per Monica's wish I was scheduled to pick her up at exact 4 p.m. from the airport. I took the keys to my car and headed towards the garage. I seated myself and drove towards the airport. It was drizzling that day, the wiper vigorously swiped car's windscreen. Within an hour or so I reached the airport. I parked the car and hurried towards the airport terminal. After 15 minutes of wait, I saw Monica emerging from one of the gates of the airport. Accompanying her was a lanky man with warm frizzy hair that were tied up in a man bun. That was the first time I saw Adam. Seeing him gave me shivers of fear. Monica vigorously waved at me. I hurried towards her and welcomed her a tight big hug. He introduced me to Adam her would-be life partner. I still remember, Adam's emotionless stare as he looked me straight into my eyes. For a second I startled. Monica's chirpy voice broke Adam's vacant stare. After Adam's small introduction, the porter carried our luggage and we exited the airport terminal. Monica lived alone in Bradford in a two-bedroom condo that was 34 minutes drive away from my residence. 
After picking the couple from the airport we went to Fresh Burger my and Monica's favorite eatery. Throughout the drive Adam sat muted at the back deeply observing his surroundings. We greedily devour our burgers. Monica shared her memories and adventures from her vacations. After finishing our meal, we headed back home. Within 15 minutes I dropped Adam and Monica at their condo. Next day Monica came over to my place and took me for shopping. As her engagement day was just around the corner. She was jubilant for her special day and she thought I had a good taste for fashion, so she needed my help for wedding shopping spree. We shopped for hours that day. It was getting darker, so we rushed back home, again stopping at our favorite eatery Fresh Burger. Monica waved goodbye and reversed her car out of the garage. It was 1st of July. Monica's big day had finally arrived, she looked ravishing in her lavender Givenchy gown. I can recall, Monica's face blushing with excitement, she looked happy on that day. The air was filled with fragrance of lilies and roses. Monica's laughter and the chirping of the guests is all that I could remember. Adam on the other hand looked stiff as usual. His manbin was perfectly gelled back and for the first time he looked neat. But his stern rigid expression was still present on his face. After the engagement event Monica had planned a beach party, at which everyone was invited. It was a day filled with laughter and excitement. Soon it was dark, everyone was enjoying a long soothing night at the beach. Adam and Monica were patrolling the shores, some were dancing to the beats of the music that was being played. I could see that Monica was in no mood to end the party any soon. But feeling so lonely and sleepy, I hastened back home as it was half an hour drive back home. I dozed off as soon as I reached back home. Loud thunderclap and the pitter-pattering of the rain woke me up. It was raining cats and dogs. I quickly rushed towards my bedroom window to shut it, I washed my face and went into the kitchen and made myself a cup of hot chocolate. Sipping my hot chocolate it was then, I received the call from the cops and got informed of that tragedy that had followed that night. That was the last time I saw my childhood friend. Not aware of what had happened later that party night, the inspector stared at me and handed me the tissue to stop my... To stop my snobbing, right, the inspector exclaimed, he told me that he had interrogated everyone who was at the party and I was the last person that he interrogated that day. As, you have a close relationship with the deceased, so it's better that should know what had just happened later that night. Inspector exclaimed, he further told me that they had arrested Adam for the charges of murdering Monica Hilton Smith. My jaws dropped on hearing this and my mind blanked out for a while. My ears started ringing but how did this incident all happen? I questioned the inspector. Well, the inspector proceeded, later that night Monica and Adam had gotten into a huge violent and abusive fight at their crib which resulted in Adam pushing Monica of the twelfth floor. Being pushed from such a height, Monica's feeble body couldn't take the violent push and had a cardiac arrest which resulted in her death on the spot. The nearby neighbors on hearing the loud yelling and shouting, informed the police of the happening. By the time the police reached Monica's crib, it was already too late and we had lost Monica. The reason for the fight is still unknown as Adam at the moment is not mentally stable. Due to the shocking trauma, I struggled to gather my senses. Inspector patted me on my right shoulder and allowed me to leave the interrogation session. I clenched my purse tightly and walked out of the police station. As I walked past the mortuary, I got the last and final glimpse of Monica's petite body lying motionlessly on the floor. Alas, my long childhood friend has parted ways. I was eager to see Monica walking down her wedding aisle, but destiny has its own ways, which all of us fail to understand at times. Vivify Studio Stories